Hello, I'm Dr. Penelope Perkins Vesey. I work for NC State University in the Horticultural Sciences Department, but I'm based down in Kannapolis in the Plants for Human Health Institute with the NC Research Campus in Kannapolis. Today we're going to do a video showing you how to rate blackberries and raspberries for post-harvest quality if you're interested in doing shelf life studies. The first thing we do is you get the fruit out of the cooler. These are stored in clamshells and they're held at 5C usually or about 41 degrees Fahrenheit. And then they've been stored about a week. Starting with these, I can pull these out. Now I already see that I have some problems with them. You see these red areas on here that usually means that there's some sort of leakage. It was raining this morning and so we developed this, this reddening color. So this may be from leakage or it may be from rainfall. This would be not a one because these droplets have give to them when you touch them. The cortex itself, which is the part inside here, is quite firm. So I would rate this a two because there is a little bit of movement on the outside. One is the firmest and there's one or two in here that are quite hard. This one would be quite hard. It has no give when you push it. and the cortex is very firm. And I rank these, I put these in order. So the number ones are in the top, number twos and so forth down the line. And the next one I would be doing would be number three, which has more give. This is always a hard one. Number two is probably the hardest, but it's got more give than a two, but it's not mushy like a four or five is going to be. And a three is what I could consider the limit for sales if you're going to be selling these. When you get to a three, you don't ever want to be harvesting a three off the plant because they'll never make it to market. And once they've been sitting in shelf, on the shelf, like we would be doing here, they would turn into a four or five after a week. So now, the first thing you do is you have your data sheet here and you're going to be ranked just putting the simple counts on each of these categories. So you count the number ones and you write that in the first one and the twos and so forth. So at the end you'll have all the berries in the clamshell to totaled out as well, which you're going to need to calculate your percent soft and percent firm, uh, percent decayed. This is the hardest step. Once you get the firmness figured out, that's another reason we do it first because it's the most tiring part of a clamshell. Once you get that done, the rest is easier. You look for leakage, which is pretty easy to see in this one. There's a big red dot underneath the berry. You don't even have to turn it very hard. Same with this one. So you do the same thing with this. You add up, all the, the only thing you have to do on this part is write down the number for they're actually a leaky. You don't have to do the total part again. That saves time and it saves problems with math. And then the last step I do is I would go through these and look for decay. So I would pick up every one out of these rows and turn it over very carefully and look for any kind of mold, visible mold or decay. Usually in blackberries you're going to see it in the calyx end. It's going to be down here where it attached to the stem or the pedestal. Now in raspberries things are a little bit different because here color is everything. You have to have the consumer appeal and consumers don't like really dark red raspberries. These are almost purple. They'll be purple tomorrow and that's can, perceived as being overripe by consumers. So the first thing I do is give this an overall score of zero to three, where zero, if they came out of storage, zero would be something that was really light in color, perhaps like this, which is almost a, an a underripe stage, or there would be a three, which would be this very dark purplish color here. The next thing I would do is take these out individually and determine firmness on them. A firm one. It doesn't have as much give when you touch it. It feels firm in your fingers. It's not pushing in when you push. Whereas this one, this one's broken, so that's going to make it soft automatically. But the calyx starts to close on you, the opening, when you press on it. So it's just a matter of going through the whole pack and determining whether they're soft or firm. Usually, too, you'll find that anything that's a dark red color is going to be soft. 
So go through the whole package and you'll have these all divided out. In the data sheet, you'll write down the number that are firm and the number that are soft. And when you add those two together, that'll be your total number of fruit. And then you're going to look for decayed fruit. Now in this case, let's see if I can find it. There were some that had decay on them. This one, there's a little tiny bit right there. A bit of white. On raspberries, it's a little harder to see. Sometimes it'll be up on the top of the fruit. Sometimes it'll be down in the base. Sometimes it's white, and sometimes it's greenish colored on the decay. But we just do an all or nothing rating on decay. Either it has it or it doesn't have it. The next thing that we've been working on is trying to come up with a quantitative measurement of firmness. We want to be able to say, Every year when we come into this, we're going, well, what was a firm blackberry from last year? And we have certain varieties we know are firm, like Navajo, for instance, and some of the raspberries we think now we know what's firm, but there's not, those aren't necessarily the first ones that are ready. So we'd like to know, okay, when I'm training my fingers again for the year, what's going to be firm, what's going to be soft? And we've had a hard time finding an instrument that would do that. Now, this instrument here is a, it's a firm, firmness tester. And it has a five pound uh, calibration weight on it. So it only goes to five pounds of firmness. And this is in strong contrast to say an apple firmness tester which would go to 20 or 30 pounds of firmness. And small fruits have very low firmness values, particularly raspberries. So we want something that's very, very sensitive. So what we do is we'll put the fruit down, the berry down, calyx side down on a flat surface. And then, this has units of firmness that you can use. It can go from newtons to pounds so, or kilograms. So it depends on your market. The U.S. may go for pounds on a grading standard, and for science we use newtons. So I'm going to use, put this in newtons right now. And what we'll be doing, this is just a compression head, it's a flat head, it's I believe eight millimeter diameter. And we'll just slowly put it down here. And what will happen is it will stop when it reaches maximum force. So that one's reading 1.24 newtons. Which for a raspberry isn't very much. That comes out to 0 0.2 pounds. Growers can go out there, we found this summer, and just test the fruit on the vine, the, on the uh, blackberry plant, and say, okay, if I squeeze it a little bit with my fingers, this is a two, or this is a one, or this is a three. And after two days of rain, you're usually going to have a lot of threes. You don't want to harvest those and ship those to market. So you would have your crew go through and pick those off and save them either for wine or discard them. Whatever you're going to take to market has to be a one or a two when it's picked. Otherwise, it just won't make it. So when we get done with all of the data collection that we have here, we'll summarize it all up into these sheets. And we'll end up with a table that shows us how these fruit compare to each other. For breeders, it's very effective because they can look at individual selections and say, yes, this has a good score, no, it doesn't, and after two years' worth of data, we should know whether we're going to continue with it or not. And it also helps us with little things like environmental cues. For instance, are these berries going to hold up under rainfall, or are they not going to be any good at all, or are they going to be good no matter what? The other factor that you have here when you get done with this data is that as a grower, you can say, okay, this is a variety for me. And by screening all of these varieties, by screening this, the breeding selections, we can say that, okay, we have a very good variety here for North Carolina that can be used by raspberry and blackberry growers for good shelf life. And that will last long enough to get it to the store up on the East Coast in New York City, for instance, or down in Florida without it going bad in two or three days. And hopefully with all this, we can also prove that we have superior varieties for shelf life.